can be a day. Hi, David. It's so nice that this is working. We Hi, Daniel. Had, we just had some technical glitches to get it started, but this is this is wonderful. Yes. For, for me, this is an opportunity to dive. Yes, I just did. What you? <laughs> okay. Okay, the first was... glitch was the first glitch was the cat knocked my video my my camera off from where I had it taped on top of the computer. Okay. That was the that was that that was that was the video I interruption. So it we're in the Ozarks here. So mm -hmm. Ozark Ozark Tech. <laughs> okay. So, so this okay. is this is what wonderful to get a chance to speak with you. Um, I feel like I have an opportunity to really dive, dive into the history of bioregionalism. Um, okay. And I, I would love for you to start off with um, what moved you to start the North American um, Bioregional Congress and, and maybe just share a little bit of your journey wherever you want to start. Okay. Well, the first the first part of the story is the conceptualization and organizing of the first North uh, Ozark Area Community Congress or OAK. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and that that kind of came to me in the mid '70s, mm -hmm. even before I'd heard the word bioregionalism. Mm -hmm. And um, and then a couple of years later, I ran across the Planet Drum Foundation um, and Peter Berg and, and that work. But um, it, it, after I decided to start the organizing process for the first Ozark Area Community, Community Congress or OAK, which of course relates to our, what I call our totem tree here in the Ozarks, the OAK. It's a, a way to say OAK. Um, it took me about three years to organize the first uh, Oak, which convened in um, October the 3rd, 1980. And we had people, about 130 people showed up in the middle of nowhere at a place called New Life Farm, which was an appropriate technology research center, which, we, which I was working um, with, with a, a bunch of, of, of friends and allies who were trying to explore, you know, uh, all, all manner of, of functional alternatives to in terms of energy, food production, permaculture. And so those efforts uh, called the New Life Farm, which was uh, akin to the Farallones Institute here in the States, uh, New Alchemy Institute, others. So there was a co-creative co um, thing going on. And so uh, anyway, um, the first oak took place in October of 80 at New Life Farm facility uh, out in the middle of the Ozarks, middle of nowhere. About 130 people showed up. I had invited people from all over the United States. Anybody that I had any connection to with regard to ecological modalities uh, uh, including by that time, uh, bioregional connections. Um, I made a broad invitation and a lot, quite a few people showed up and it was a, quite an, a vibrant event. And at that point, I proposed at the first Oak, I proposed that we actually have a, what I call a Congress of Congresses and put a resolution up to our plenary. We were, we were operating in a, you know, in a, in a, as a Congress, we were we were working and we were of a, a, a constituent assembly, and I had invited people to come, not as participants in a conference, but as uh, co-equal, um, consensual participants in a deliberative process to to create essentially a constitution for the Ozarks in the terms of the of the Ozark nation, the con conceptualization of, a, of an ecological nation. And, um, and so we had committees, working committees, and um, on 
appropriate technology, forestry, energy, health, um, community land tenure, a whole range of things that were essential to the functioning of, uh, an, alter, of an ecological nation. I, I'm saying all this because all this is template for the North American Bioregional Congress. Uh, is, that, is that making sense so far? Making sense, and I just um, I just found an, an article by you um, published by a friend of mine in in Context magazine. Robert Gilman published an article of yours reflecting on the um, on the North American Congress. But what I really liked in it, you you um, highlighted Peter Berg's notion of Congress, and he he said back then there needs to be a continent Congress so that, so that the occupants of North America can finally become inhabitants and find out where they are. This Congress is a verb, Congress, come together, come together with the continent, so spot on. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm getting chills while you're reading this because um, I had the idea for the Ozark Congress before I read Amble, toward Continent Congress. Mm -hmm. And in the process of organizing North American Bioregional Congress, I came across this article. And it was the lead um, quote to the invitation um, to the first North American Bioregional Congress, along with a quote from Thomas Berry. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I sent out this invitation to every ecological group in, in that I knew of, not only in North America, but everywhere, um, to come to the first North American Bioregional Congress. Mm -hmm. But that, but NABC was born at Oak, at the Ozark Congress, and in a resolution that I made, both at the first and second Ozark Area Community Congresses, where we actually formally agreed, and Peter Berg was present. Mm -hmm. um, Peter Berg was present at the meeting because he came to our, he and a contingent from Planet Drum came to our second um, Ozark Congress. Mm -hmm. So it was very, very, you know, uh, copacetic, uh, you know, uh, kind of really amazing how this was all in the air to be, you know, precipitated out. You know, it's like a saturated solution. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, what I what I find uh, actually, what I find almost like unbelievably difficult to comprehend is that you guys were onto something back then that only now I feel more people are starting to catch on to and that it has taken us quite that long to understand the dimension of the crisis. And I, I think I know the Thomas Berry quote you just alluded to. Um, let me see, let me try if it's this one. Um, so now we experience a moment when a change of vast dimension is demanded, a period of change from, from the mechanistic to the organic, from oppressive human tyranny over the planet to the rule of the earth community itself, the community of all living and long living components of the planet that neither the nation state nor Western civilization has ever seen before. That's it. Yeah. That those were the two lead quotes to the invitation to NABC one. <laughs> and that um yeah, there it is. Yeah. And and we're still we're still having to advocate for the necessity of this change instead of having every child that was born like I was in the 1970s um have had this culturally inoculated into their relationship to place and planet. Yeah, we're, we're slow learners. Yeah, uh, so, <laughs> well, um, yeah, this, um, the whole process of, of, of organizing NABC1 was magical. I, I cannot, that's the only word I can use. Um, I don't know how it was done. I can't explain it. it I didn't really, I, I had access to a, a telephone, but mostly I wrote hundreds of letters. And we, I, uh, I, we created a, a coordinating council. 
I'd like to be able to send you some of these early documents, but, but um, in any case, I guess I'll just say that to, to kind of like uh, um, uh, uh, epitomize the magic of it, it, it was an enormously complex process and it took three years. Um, but two weeks before the event was to happen, uh, I had a, a friend or a co-worker was helping me, Marie Steinwalks, and, um, and we were working out of New Life Farm, uh, this place I mentioned earlier where the first oak was convened. And, and two weeks before the Congress, all of a sudden there was nothing to do, nothing left to do. I, I woke up, I looked around, I tried to figure out what details, anything that was missing, nothing w was missing. And I, I just, I, I was absolutely stunned. And I remember walking down to the creek in a kind of a, a fog going, what, in, what has happened here? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think most, most people, like I'm, I'm also a digital immigrant, meaning I was born before ubiquitous computing became, became the norm. But, um, but for most younger people listening to this, they don't understand um, how difficult it was in times of just a phone and um, letters yeah. to, to convene people in disparate areas of the United States um, to come to a certain place for a certain time. Yeah, I again, I I I can't I I don't I couldn't do it again, mm -hmm. and I guess the answer to the question of how it happened was that um, um well first I don't know but it wasn't I didn't do this, I, it, not this 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 person, mm -hmm. there was something else going on that I can only refer to guidance or the spirit of the earth or whatever it is that I, I that's all I can attribute it to because nothing in my rational capacity to analyze can 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 come up with a reasonable answer but you might you might be able to answer I mean I, I think that it's a sign that you're on to something that needs to happen when when the larger body of life and earth works through one and just moves one but but what was it? What that, was the, that's what, it? What what was the why that moved David Hankey to a move to New Life Farm and then engage in this? Like what 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 touched your heart? What started your calling? Well, I I I don't know if I put it in the email to you, but it goes back to when I was at least when I was ten years old. It was in 1955, thereabouts. And I had an experience out in the woods in which I was literally sat down as a child on a, on a log in the fall, in the Michigan fall. On the, and, and, and sat still for an unknown, uh, I don't know how long I sat there. And something, something I was in a co completely different kind of realm entirely. And um, and that's where it started. I, I was get, I, something a transmission. It's the signal experience of my of my existence, mm -hmm. and it put me on my track. And it, it wasn't until I'd actually moved, become a back to the land person, and moved to the Ozarks in 1971, and that will be the 50th anniversary of us arriving in the Ozarks in March of a communal group in Ann Arbor. Uh, we came from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, but it wasn't until I got here and been here a few years, I, this vision came back to me and I realized how I got here, how I got here to the Ozarks. And one reason that I wanted to come down here was to begin uh, living and promoting an entire range of alternative modalities for, for human life including renewable energy and organic farming and gardening. And in order to do that, we had to be on the land. And this is the only land we could afford <laughs> out here as far away from the cities as we could find. But that, that's the story. It's a, it's a continuous 
a, it's a, it's a, a continuity from when, from childhood. And um, it, uh, it brought me here. It brought me to the work. It, it, it uh, doing appropriate technology work with all, with our, with our friends and allies here at this, at New Life Farm was, um, you know, very much in the vision, but bioregionalism, when it came to me, it coalesced everything. It all fell into an, an integrity across every conceivable dimension and depth. It's, it's, it's more than an earthbound, um, I call it eco holofractal. It's a cosmology. It, it, Thomas, Thomas Berry takes it, it from the universe to the bioregion. So it's part of the DNA of the universe for, for the earth to be uh, brought into being. And who knows how many billions more planets, it's not an accident. It's, it's part of the fabric that this be manifested. And further, this, um, what I call spirit of the earth or uh, it, it, it is part of that. And uh, there's a famous quote by a native person that talking to the Neo-Europeans who invaded this continent and virtually destroyed every, everything that was here, uh, uh, that if the, if the white people are here long enough, the land will begin to speak to them. Yeah. And that some, somehow, somehow that's, that's happened in the 60s, a bit in, the, in what I call an epical uh, mutation of human thought, which I call ecocentrism. And that, that is infinitely profound. It is a real thing. And it is the, 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 the profundity of it is, is limitless. But one thing about it is it, it is acultural. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's not bound to a Native American philosophy or any philosophy or anthropocentric conceptualization of reality. It's completely in the Zen metaphor, direct pointing, a direct connection to this information that is completely saturating the entire bios ecosphere that is full of all the information necessary to unpack what bioregionalism is, which is nothing less than a completely integrated um, mode for the, for, for the reconstitution of human life on the planet at every conceivable level. I've identified 28 different levels which are integrated it to, to create the functional nation that is a bioregional nation. I would love to actually go into those um, 28. I don't know if we have time for that, but before that, before we go there, I just wanted to um, pick up on a couple of things. Um, this, this special time where suddenly lots of young people got into this whole idea of living communally and trying to find a piece of land, like a close friend of mine is Albert Bates, who, who heard the same call and moved the people, moved down to what, what is now still the farm, um, and and also, I, I had the good good fortune of studying with um, with John and Nancy Todd. Uh, my my second PhD supervisor was was John Todd, and um, so I know about their oh, initial um, <laughs> their, their initial uh, starting of New Alchemy over on the West Coast and then moving it over to the East Coast. W was there a connection? Were you inspiring each other or? Uh, who, who, um, like this, for example, this, we need to find more appropriate ways to deal with technology closer to the land um, and, and decentralized technology. Where, where did that come from? Was it, was Bucky widely known then or who inspired <laughs> that generation? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You bring up kind of this uh, synchronously, you know, in including Albert, my friend, <laughs> Albert Bates, my friend. Um, I know John Todd, I've met him. Back when I was doing full-time ecological organizing, I would meet John on the circuit. I call it the circuit. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and um, and so um, I haven't seen him for a long time. But but uh, Wes Jackson is another person who is part of this matrix, this phenomenal matrix. I would see Wes on the circuit, uh, and and Peter Berg, and and a whole a whole bunch of folks that are seminal in this whole this whole I, I'm calling it a matrix. Um, but yes, I mean, where did it start? Uh, <laughs> Um, E.F. Schumacher, you got to bring E.F. Schumacher's work in. The Small is Beautiful, that seminal. Um, oh gosh, this is this is really. I mean, my mind is spinning right now because I'm wanting to go to origins. Y you got to go back to Henry George, and and the um, the um, single tax movement, uh, progress and prosperity. You've got to go back to um, um, the, the work, the work of um, of um, more contemporary, tem more contemporary, com contemporaneously, uh, of uh, Robert Swan and Susan Witt, who were uh, what I call in the apostolic succession from Henry George up through Ralph Borsodi. These these phenomenal thinkers in decentralism. Um, uh, Mildred Loomis, the School of Living, these things are all from the states, but they're all intimately connected in this kind of a skein of, of, of what I call the third way, the third way. It's, it's, not, it's not left, it's not right, the cooperative movement, the entire global cooperative movement going back to, this, to the um, 1850s and the Rochdale principles in England. That's, that's, it's a, we're talking about an entire entire holism here that is a middle way between capitalism socialism and everything else that started you might say in with the rochdale pioneers and then um henry george in the 1890s do you know whether Kropotkin, go ahead do you know whether kropotkin came before or after them kropotkin uh, is, is, is after the, the Rochdale mm -hmm. principles and the Rochdale pioneers. So mutual, mutual aid and Kropotkin and Bakunin, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, these things come out and, and the whole idea of, of mutualism. Um, these things are uh, deeply um, integral and all, again, all connected uh, in the sense that they're 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 in this place between these 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 what I call bicameral dysfunctions of of the left and right, which have which has oppressed the the human uh, populace since Marx came along. Um, this 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 debate between left and right is 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 useless, poisonous, and infinitely uh, counterproductive. But there's another way. The when you add the ecological centrality to, yeah. Yes, your camera moved a little bit. I can only see the top of your head. Now. Oh, oh, okay. It's synchronicity. Okay. Again. You said by camera yes. dysfunction and the camera. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, hey, um, can I can I break for a second? Sure. Can I? Can I hold on for a second? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I've, got, I've got to let the cat out. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'll be right back. Yeah, go for it. Sorry. No problem at all. <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 it's so cold out and snowy that the cat doesn't want to be out, but he has to go out and do his, do yeah. his business. Yeah. Uh, euphemistically spoken of course and so i'll probably have to go let him back in in just a little while no problem so sorry but that's would here we are want, life would, life at home want, i would not want the the cat to freeze just because we get so deep into conversation so do listen out for him or her exactly yeah. or, or 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 for him to um to uh, eliminate himself in the in the corner eliminate his <laughs> bodily fluids and substances in the corner of the house <laughs> i wouldn't be good either so so, so, so yeah you, you were just saying that um the rochdale principles were kind of from from your perspective one of the early foundations in western culture but of course in a more what you were alluding to earlier is that really 
bioregionalism is the natural way that we evolved. We are a bioregional species. We've always been um, inhabitants in the re-inhabitory sense, like deeply, actually inhabitants is the wrong word. We're, we've been expressions of the bioregions that we inhabited. We've been manifestations yes. in yes. human form yes. of those bioregional ecosystems. And, and at some point, yes with agriculture and then with the, the, the power that sedentary city-states amassed through agriculture, we, we somehow lost its way. I, I, I quite like Robert Gilman, who we mentioned earlier with the In Context Institute's framing of yes. that there's a roughly five to 8,000 year period that he calls the era of empires, the era of power over. And, and before that was the tribal area, which was bioregional by its very nature. And now we're moving into the planet yes. era, yes. which we can only mature into if we refine that connection with place, which which Gary Snyder so beautifully called re-inhabitation. Oh, yes, yes, and um, you know, you just again, you're you're mentioning so many things that are like little universes unto themselves, and 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 uh, Robert and and Diane, and rest her, she, she's gone, yeah. right? And yes, and yeah, dear friend. And um, uh, yeah, and Gary Snyder absolutely um, put me on my, consciously on my path in the late 60s um, with Earth Household, just completely co coalesced, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, Murray Bookchin as well, mm -hmm. um, bringing back the anarchist thread, uh, et cetera. I don't, but I don't want to get off the track here. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but yes, um, the Gary Snyder put in one of his books puts it in. I think it's uh, Practice of the Wild puts it a fine point on it, just basically saying what you're saying. Why why bioregion? Because because we 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 our whole being, our whole substance, our everything of, of in the in the pre you know conquest imperialist. Uh, a period as that Robert, you that I'm I'm paraphrasing Robert your your relation to Robert but um, you move and when you come out of a bioregion as a as a tribe or a culture and you you cross over into the next place you don't know where you are mm -hmm. you don't know how to live there it's different you it, because you've learned to live in this place and and you're intimately connected with what it takes to live there and it's it's very straightforward and, and in this and uh, one definition i have of bioregionalism i call it eco ecological decentralization and so we've got to decentralize but the deepest most integral place uh, in the ecosphere to decentralize is of course the bioregion so it's the integrity and the breadth and the depth of the bioregion. Yeah. No, no, I didn't want to cut. Go ahead. Off. I just want to, sorry, finish your sentence, please. The integrity and the breadth of the depth of the bioregion. Well, well, it, it, it yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's total. It, it, it goes backwards and forwards in time. In other words, it's, it's of the moment. It always was. It always will be. The bioregional affecting the bioregional reality in 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 reality in in a functional human society not just in principle mm -hmm. and it goes back in time beyond to to the to the far reaches of any cog cognition of time it's it's timeless it's always present and one of the definitions parts of the definition of bioregionalism that i that i like to use is that you, Bioregionalism is also a discriminator. It's a discriminating um, modality or an algorithm, if you like. It's a way to discriminate those things which are actually functional in the world from those things which are not. Mm -hmm. And so it, bioregionalism, uh, quoting myself uh, poorly, it takes the best in the most of all the older cultures, the older experience of human beings as we know it, and combines that with the most functional, the most ecologically defensible of what exists in the present time and integrates them, fuses them, synthesizes them. 
absolutely. That's that's exactly how, how I have I, to let the cat in again. <laughs> okay, you go ahead. Yeah, for 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 me, for for me, part of my journey to bioregionalism, while I first read about it sort of in the early at Schumacher College, so you mentioned EF Schumacher, an appropriate place to read about it. Um, while I was studying holistic science at Schumacher College in 2001. Um, but I took Schumacher very literal. Actually, I came to Schumacher College because I was already interested in the eco-village movement, which Tom and Diane, uh, Robert and Diane Gilman that we just mentioned were, were so critical in, in helping to birth. And um, my focus in those days long-haired hippie in a VW van, um, but in, in, the, in the late 90s rather than the 60s and 70s, was wanting to find a place where I could uh, create a community with friends that could also be an environmental education center demonstrating appropriate technology. So very, very akin just a few decades later. And then I, I spend a lot of time with the Global Eco Village Network and 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 research, like I lived at Findhorn Community in, in Scotland for four years, um, and then when when Rob Hopkins started in two thousand and six the Transition Town Movement after his experience in Ireland and yes. Kinsale, yes, yes, um, I I jumped onto that as a way of of kind of maybe mainstreaming and the, the Eco Village idea in the sense of we we don't all have to create intentional communities we we can transform the communities we live in neighborhood by neighborhood. But, but I eventually learned through the, the whole systems design approach um, that, that I worked on with my PhD and then later with Guy Education, um, that the scale of a small community, the scale of an eco-village or a transition town is simply not the appropriate scale to truly re-inhabit. Um, there is something around economics of scale, but not in the neoliberal sense of make it bigger and bigger and bigger, but it needs to go to a certain size that you can actually meet human needs regeneratively within the confines of, of the region by and large. Doesn't mean you can't have trade, but you, you kind of keep it relatively regional. And that, yeah. that's what, that's what mm -hmm. took me to, to understand that bioregions are at the center of this. Um, yeah. So it's very akin. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to bring up um, is that you mentioned you mentioned is scale and economic and and and, and, and scalar uh, optimalities um, in economics. Um, in one of my pieces that I sent you on bioregionalism and ecological economics, I don't know if you mm -hmm. get. I don't think you may not have had a chance to read it. Mm -hmm. But there's a there's a part of it there, which, which refers to which is the the ecological audit, and I refer to the ecological audit as the as the beating heart of it all in terms of uh, again like an eco hollow fractal algorithm, which 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 helps us determine the optimality. And the necessity, 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 necessary scale uh, of any enterprise that we take take on. Um, and that section of that piece is also the beating heart of ecological economics, which is an absolutely prof es essential dimension. It's made. It's probably I call it a, a meta, a meta dimension of, bi of bioregionalism. A bioregion itself is the most profoundly evolved and functional eco ecological economy that can ever be imagined in the way that it utilizes the flow of matter and energy, runs entirely from the so solar energy, doesn't waste anything. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a magical thing. And it is an economy and it is also a, a, a a uh, governance. There's governance there. One of the great quotes of bioregionalism is by a fellow named Jim Dodge, who wrote uh, an article called uh, "Governance by Life," mm -hmm. and that and that's that's also the watchword of bioregionalism in its in its um is its political eco political manifestations, which are also very profound. 
profoundly necessary. I started my bioregional organizing in an eco, eco, ecological political context, really. But the ecological economics, and I noticed that one of your, one of your, one of your interviews was with Robert Costanza. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Long Did you not have one of your, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and I, I attended the first, uh, the first uh, international conference of the uh, International Society for uh, e Ecological Economics in, um, in the World Bank in 1993. Because I'm because ecological economics is absolutely f foundational to this. Well, it's and it's um, very, it's, it's, very a, it's a it's a pro yeah. It's it's very linked to because I mean you, you said that one of the books that um, triggered you your path was was Gary Snyder's book about the Earth household, and really what we I mean it, for some people it's become a bit of a platitude to remind economists about this, but but then very often when I speak to economists. They still look at me surprised when I remind them that um, they are working with the um, management of the household, but they're com completely illiterate Oikos. about the, 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 the teachings of the household. So you can't, if, if you don't have ecology inform economics, then economics can only be dysfunctional. And 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 also two things, it's, it's, critical things that for me is is a re really big um, corroboration of of my own learning in all this. That you just highlighted two aspects that I feel are, are critical for bioregionalism, which is on the one hand the notion of subsidiarity, so how, uh, governance. How do we bring the political yes. domain into a format that there is true participation possible, that people can actually care about place because they feel they have a say in how the place and how they their being in the place is run. And, and so we, we need to somehow bring national and international governance bodies into subsidiarity, into service of bioregional and, and local governance. Um, and, and all of this will not be possible without an economic relocalization. So the, the, the two, these two dimensions, um, I've also kind of got to, yeah, there. it's central for making bioregionalism work. Yeah, yeah. most definitely, most definitely. Um, I, 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 a precursor to the, to, the, to the article that I wrote, I sent you on bioregionalism and ecological economics mm -hmm. was, was a, a piece I called conventional economics as a Gaian disease the diagnosis and cure through ecological economics. And I basically put the whole thing in a, in a, in the fact that Gaia has a, a disease. It's for specifically, it's a, it's a cancerous, it's a cancer. And that cancer is the macro economy and the micro economy as they're manifested in local, in localities. It has the same dynamics as cancer. And this is a, a, a uh, saying that uh, inspiration that I had actually in, in 1970 before I came down here. It's like, oh my God, our economy is ca is 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 a is a cancer on the uh, uh, of the planet, and the only way to heal it is through an eco ecological economies decentralized down into functional scales, um, and the and and the way to um, determine whether any given thing that human human beings do in any given place at any given scale is through the ecological audit. It, 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 and, um, and so I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. At the heart of, we, how do we determine that whether the things that we're doing belong on this planet or not? And the, the uh, very evolved ecological audit is that central way to reflect upon what we do. And my definition of economics is just how human beings get what they want and need. It's very simple. And the way that we do it is, is, is creating a, 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 a pandemic that's been going on for 10,000 years since human beings started digging into making lesions as Wes Jackson or uh, or, or, or one of his books that he's cited in, he said, you go back to the earth and you look 10,000 10, years ago and you get up at the satellite view and you begin to see lesions appearing uh, on the, in the Tigris and Euphrates Valley. 
when human beings started opening, making incisions in the body of Gaia and extracting out uh, all this bounty, which they didn't had that access before the advent of agriculture. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's uh, yeah. So and and how would you like the the ecological audit? Audit seems like a, it's very much used as a as a sort of methodology term these the, these days. And did you come up with a with a kind of um, step by step methodology for an ecological audit back then? In the in the in the article in the bioregionalism and ecological economics, there's a section on the ecological audit, and it's not a it's not so much a methodology but a set of parameters. And basically, it's a set of questions. Water pollution, like, toxics, energy distribution, monetary and other capital inputs human community is it those that section yeah yeah that's it and and, you, and basically you're taking you're taking a look at all the economic processes and you're filtering through the audit and you're saying does this pass the audit um and and it's it basically it intends to be compre comprehensive by definition but it needs to be extrapolated and made much much more much deeper and more and more um, filled out, if you like, it's it's basically just a, it's a it's a it's a template for a, 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 an ecological audit that could be perhaps developed by supercomputers or whatever, feeding in all the data, but it but it is it is again the heart of the matter because how how do we know if something we're doing is 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 doesn't belong on the planet? and whether it's being being counterproductive over the long period um to to life itself and therefore ourselves if we don't have a benchmark set of benchmarks for determining these things mm -hmm. and, it, and also one of the beautiful things about the ecological audit is that when it's carried out it's also in a, an immensely uh, uh theoretically i'm saying beneficial uh, mode for determining um, um, profitability, and it's it, it's a um, way to to uh, create what I call the the ecologically rationalized market system. Mm -hmm. This is the sweet spot between communism and capitalism and all of its dysfunctions. The market system, when it's ecologically uh, rationalized operates just like ecosystems in nature incredibly efficient um uh, it, it, so it's that is the economic system that we need in the third way in between communism and capitalism a, a cooperative economy that uses the market system uh, herman daly is another profound source and one of the progenitors uh, uh, rather than using word fathers which is uh, of of ecological economics a, a christian a very devout christian yeah now i just wanted to pick up something that is a, is a beautiful resonance again that that one of the frameworks um, that you work or i work with a lot and people work with a lot in in the regenerative um development tradition is that you always look for um, how to, rather than see the activating and the constraining force as two either or opposites that just keep, simply have to clash. So you, you could say capitalism is the activating force and communism is the, the, the restraining force. And, and you, you ask yourself the question, what is the potential created in this polarity that, that could bring the, the two together. So, so the whole notion of the third way is, is, is very resonant there. And um, I, I also feel that, that the one, one thing that I've been, first from an educational standpoint, when I was working with Guy Education on a bioregional design education program that so far hasn't been, been run yet, um, and then later from a more, more strategic program with my work here on Mallorca, I keep thinking that while each process of re-inhabitation will have to be unique to the bioregion that it's happening in and it has to be driven by the people in that bioregion in in as inclusive a process as possible um 
there, there is a series, and, and I think your ecological audit kind of sketches the broader ballpark out. Um, there is a series of questions people can ask themselves in each region that will enable them to A, begin the educational process of re-inhabitation to understand the region. Like more and more, I'm, I'm realizing key to activating the bioregional movement is that the people who are already working bioregional in a bioregion need to see themselves. They need to see the other parts of the system that are already expressions of Gaia healing. Like it, I, I actually see it as a planetary immune response um, at the regional scale. That, 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 that Absolutely. something is working through a lot of people mm -hmm. that are beginning to do this work now. And, um, and so, so I, I keep, call it, keep calling it the, the bioregional um, database or question generating engine, because I'm, I'm, very, I'm very focused on questions rather than answers, because questions are much more in, inclusive. They, they invite people in and, and also they, the minute you focus more on the questions rather than the answers, you, you have the humility to understand that all answers and solutions are temporary and the best you can do at the time, but they need to be revisited um, because context changes. Yes, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, um, you know, the, 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 the formulation of the, of the Congresses, both the Original Ozark Congress and the North American, or which came to be the Continental Bioregional Congresses, of which there were ten. Um, the, formula, the original formulation that I made was for the Congress to work in multiple dimensions and have multiple functionalities. One of the things was to bring people together as representatives to the. Congress, representing not, not only their watersheds or bioregions, but also uh, co uh, coterminous, uh, um, this, a, a salient um, uh, element of ecological work that they were doing. In other words, come and represent your watershed or your bioregion, also represent permaculture. Represent ecologics, um, represent ecological architecture all down the 28 things. Come together in the deliberative body to make a consensus. And there, there are all the elements then together, face to face, create an ongoing a consensus of uh, uh, extrapolate this inherent pa paradigm that's already there in the bioregion. Oh. Hello. Hello. I, I, the connection was really bad for the last 60 seconds. Could you say what you just said again? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you did you get the part about the reason for the Congress coming together? Yeah, that's about when it started to to, to get a bit um, shaky. Yeah. So you be getting yeah. people to be representatives, uh, the, and you said the purpose permaculture, and you said permaculture representing permaculture, and then you you listed a few more, but I I missed those. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, kind of a jump to the twenty eight elements. In other words, if possible, you would have represented at a given deliberative body where you're formulating your consensus, you know, as many of those as possible, because these are the elements that you have to integrate and weave together according to the bioregional, the intrinsic bioregional pa pa paradigm. So, but, it, but, that, but that, I was just speaking to what you were saying about bringing together the necessary uh, ideas and then being able to evaluate them in terms of their 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 appropriateness i i noticed that you even, that makes sense yeah absolutely and and i noticed that you also like you even used in in this report from the first congress you you used the whole 
notion of whole systems design and um, integrating the, the, these different dimensions. But maybe, maybe you could, do you know the 28 di um, dimensions by, by memory at the moment? Can you talk us through them or would that be too much? Shall we just refer people to an article? <laughs> I, I, I'd love to. Um, I've been actually asked to do that before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, so well, what what are these twenty eight elements, and could you could you unpack that? And I'm saying, well, um, okay, but I need six months. <laughs> I need a college. I need a college course where I can spend. You know, because the de each one of them is again a, a, a eco holofractal, mm -hmm. and each one of them contains the totality of all. Eco agriculture. Yeah, I, again, unfortunately, somehow the the the, the god of the connection of of not with us. I I heard each one of them is an eco whole of fractal, and each one of them contains production the distribution. Whoops. Well, sorry. That contains the totality of. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill my camera to see whether we get a better um, connection if without the camera. Um, can you say again the totality of the eco -holo fractal? Okay. Let's see if it's yeah. So on. each one of the. In twenty eight, not is that not helping? Um, it's getting better. But I heard the. I wonder, I wonder if I should stop yeah. my audio. And then not audio, but camera. Maybe. Okay. If you if you if we just do an audio rather than have the video as well. I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to figure out how to stop my audio. No, no, uh, without. Just, Stopping the video. It's the audio is working. It's all good. Now, now it's a better connection. Continue. So I think now we're, we're fine. Okay. Okay. So so, e okay. Each one of the each one of the eco holofractals, and let's just pick one. Um, uh, ecological agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just say we were talking about ecological technology. Or appropriate technology earlier in the Schumacher and other connections. So let's go with that. So one of the eco holofractals is if you begin to extrapolate the meaning and import, you automatically bring in the totality of all the other 27, or you also invoke the whole content of each of, of the other 27. And so does that make I I sense we're un, unlucky with the connection. This is such a shame. I, I've, I'm trying to think how we could get around this. Are you far far away from from Jeff's place? Um, to some some other time reschedule and and you call in from where Jeff is, um, because that normally holds the the connection. Oops, no. Uh, yeah, you know, I was thinking earlier if this didn't work, that um, I I have to go, which is a uh, on um where I would be at my daughter's, who has a very you know a a very fast connection. I don't know if that day would work for you. Wait, which um, day? Which day is it? To, I could try to go to the twenty fourth of February. Um, let's 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 try to reschedule it via via email because I I've just closed my agenda to keep the bandwidth down as as, as much as possible. But that that it's probably possible. Yeah. Right? Okay. 